Hello, 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 hello. What's up, everybody? I am here. <laughs> What's going on? All right. It's time for some Mass Effect. How you doing? How you doing? I'm excited. I've spent the last seven or eight months playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so it's time for a very different game. A game that I've never, ever played. Um, just being around Blind Wave, I've heard some stuff about Mass Effect, but I truly don't know much other than its setting. Uh, Bioware making it, which I played in Knights of the Republic like ten times or so. So I've always been a fan of, uh, of what that game did, so I'm excited to see what's going on here. Um, as we play, uh, I'm going to be pretty much just focused on the game and on the story. On I know that i got to, like, you know, make choices and stuff like that. While I will be interacting with chat, it might not be as much as a more casual kind of playthrough of something. I'm going to be more focused on that. And every once in a while, I'll come over and check out what you guys are excited about. Uh, please, no spoilers in the chat. I know, I, th I think we do have some mods in the chat that are going to help us out with that. And, you know, if someone's enthusiastic, don't blame them, you know. I mean, some people are probably really excited that I'm playing this, but just kindly remind them that uh, we don't need to have any spoilers in the chat, so. Anyway, hope you guys are excited. I'm very excited. Uh, this is also going to be a series that we're going to put highlights on YouTube, so if you, excuse me for a moment, we're going on to YouTube. Hey, YouTube! This is Eric, and I'm playing Mass Effect Legendary Edition Blind Playthrough for the first time. Never played Mass Effect. You're going to be able to watch this highlight, and if you are so inclined, after you're done watching, you're all caught up on my playthrough, and you can go over to twitch.tv slash blindwave and watch along on the stream live. I do have chat up so we can interact. It's going to be a lot of fun. Or if you just want to check out these highlights as we go, you can do that, all right? Uh, this was streamed about a week ago, so tonight, if you're watching this on the day this was uploaded, you'll be able to watch me play again at 6 p.m., and then it'll be 6 p.m. every Wednesday until we're done. So, anyway, uh, I think that we're going to be jumping into Mass Effect soon. All right, um, let me see here, guys. Game volume. I'll turn it down a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy. But, yeah, we put the highlights of these up the following week so I'll put this highlight of this stream up um, in the morning and then 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time we'll be playing again so um, yeah I'm excited hope you guys are excited thanks everybody for being here excuse me uh, you know usually my streams are kind of like they're kind of a chill time after work I just get to every week play get, get invested and play a game so this has been a game that I've put off playing for a long time, but once I learned that Legendary Edition was coming out, I was both like excited, oh cool, an updated version to play, and then also like, ooh, okay, that's going to be my pick. I was going to put a poll up for what I was going to play, but nope, made an executive decision, and we're playing Mass Effect. Anyway, uh, we're going to get started here. I'm excited. Uh, let me know if the audio is all good. Um, and yeah, I'll, uh, every once in a while, I'll try to look over and see what you guys, if you guys are asking any questions or anything, like, uh, uh asking, do you do YouTube and Blind with full time? Yes, we do YouTube and Blind with full time, so it is only the people that, you know, support us, that watch us, that support us on Patreon, that allow us to do this as a full time job, so it's pretty exciting. Um, game audio might be a little loud compared to vo compared to voice, so I could turn that down even more. Anyway, but we can normalize it as we go. One of your favorite gaming experiences of all time. That's awesome. My favorite gaming experience of all time is Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Especially I've played that game 30 times, no joke. And that's before Ocarina of Time 3D came out, which I've never played. I've only played the original and then like Master Mode and stuff when that came out. All right, uh, like, like I said, I'm gonna be kind of treating this more as like a reaction with gameplay versus uh, you know interacting with chat too much. So, you guys ready? Let's get into it. Hmm. 
my understanding, this is an RPG, so I imagine we'll be building a character at the beginning. Alright. Press any button. I will pick... Uh, directional pad left. Oh, yes, we went left. Fuck yeah, great choices already. Alright, start new career. Uh... Extras exit to one. Start new career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. Confirmed. Okay. Due to your convert. Co covert N7 status ID records are incomplete. Please confirm identity with the records below. Or register manually. Alright. I Okay, so I can be male, female. Okay, I will be John Shepard. Like Jack Shepard from Lost. Confirm your first name. Um, do I want to be John Shepard? See, when I play these type of games... Like, you know, I always try to go, like, what's the canon? Like, when I play Zelda, I always pick Link. You know, I don't know if I enter into, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll stay John Shepard. Why not? Or do we want to be Eric Shepard? Hmm. Choices already. I don't know what to pick. I will. Shepard is the only canon part. Make your own. Okay. We can be Eric Shepard, I suppose. See my options here. E R I K. No, it's C. Please log in to access your profile. Except profile reconstruction complete. Earthborn, soul survivor. Soul survivor, okay. Uh, yeah, I believe my character is complete. Identification confirmed. Combat difficulty normal. We got veteran. We got hardcore. We got insanity. Casual. We'll go normal. I play normal. I'm not, as you guys will see in the next three hours, I am not the best gamer in the world. So normal, I usually feel pretty good about it. Uh, let's see. Level scaling. Legendary mode. Classic mode. Hmm. Uh, maybe I'll take a uh, some suggestions on this one. What would you guys say? You want legendary mode? New ID, new ID. Do I, I need to go back? Go back, okay. How do I go back? I don't know if I can go back, guys. Oh, new ID lets you choose your class. Well, man, I wish I knew that. How do I restart? We're gonna restart. I don't know how to restart. I don't know how to go back. <laughs> We're off to a fantastic start, everybody! Close the game. Hopefully we can restart from there. See? This is why I need chat. This is why I've put off playing this game for... When did this game come out? A really long time ago. We have to go back! Yeah, okay. Mass Effect, start. Off to a fantastic start. 2007. Wow. Wow. Alright, I'm seeing this thing again. We'll go left, as we did before. We're going to start a new career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Mm -hmm. Establishing secure connection. Let's secure that connection. Secure connection confirmed. Confirmed. Enter new ID. Okay. Custom mail. Okay. I can be custom mail. 
Please log in to access your profile. Have I done everything correctly? Do I need to go back and mess something or fix something? So far, so good. Ooh, okay. Those are my hips. Warning. Data corruption detected. Please reconstruct profile. Oh, so we're... Confirm we're, we're, pre-service okay. history. Spacer, both of your parents were in the Alliance military. Your childhood was spent on ships and stations as they transferred from posting to posting, never staying in one location for more than a few years. Following in your parents' footsteps, you enlisted at the age of 18. Colonists, you were born and raised on Mendior, a small border colony in the Atacan Traverse. When you were 16, slavers raided Mendior, slaughtering your family and friends. You were saved by the Passing Alliance Patrol, and you enlisted with the military a few years later. Or Earthborn, you were an orphan raised on the streets of the great megatropolis covering Earth. Okay, like one city, I guess. Uh, you escaped the life of petty crime in the underworld gangs by enlisting with the Alliance military when you turned 18. So I like Earthborn or Spacer. Earthborn seems kind of cool. What do you guys like? I, I think I might go with Earthborn. I don't know. Megatropolis is plural. Okay, makes sense. Any is good. I'm cool. Spacer, Earthborn. Whatever you want. Uh, I like the idea of going Earthborn. It's kind of like my dude Amos in the Expanse. Earthborn. Confirm psychological profile. All right. During your service, a mission you were on went horribly wrong. Trapped in an extreme survival situation, you had to overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. You survived while all of those around you fell, and now you alone are left to tell the tale. War hero. Early in your military career, you found yourself facing an overwhelming enemy force. You risked your own life to save your fellow soldiers and defeat the enemy despite the impossible odds. Your bravery and heroism has earned you medals and recognition from the Alliance fleet. Uh, hmm. And then ruthless. Throughout your military career, you have held fast to one basic rule. Get the job done. You've been called cold and calculating and brutal. I don't like this one. Uh, Soul Survivor seems cool. I don't want to be a war here. I want to be Soul Survivor. Confirm military specialization. Okay. Soldier, engineer, adept, infiltrator, sentinel. Okay, I'm going to read these real quick, not read them out loud. I would think I would probably go soldier just by looking at all of those, but soldiers can use weapons, soldiers can improve health and specialize in all weapon types. Uh, learn with the ability to wear m medium armor and can train to use heavy armor. Ooh, that thing's cool. That's Hey, this is that thing. Whatever this is. Using the hollow... You know what? This is, uh... Yeah, the key's not too bad. Sorry, I got fascinated. Like, this is kind of see-through, so the green of the green screen behind me kind of seeps through, but eh, it's doing pretty good with the key. <sighs> Omni tool, huh? Okay. They can only wear light armor. They specialize in pistols, decryption, repair and modify, disrupt enemy weapons and shields, heal their squad. So kind of like adding perks buffs, nerfs to the other team or to your team. Adept. Ooh, that was cool. Uh, biotic specialist. Upgradable implants. They can use biotic powers. Throw objects. Ooh, like superpowers? Uh, they specialize in pistols. Only wear light armor. Infiltrator. Combine combat and tech abilities. Okay, so like a cross between sentinel, biotic, and tech. Cross between vanguard or biotic Biotic warriors, they combine biotics and weapons. Hmm, okay. <sighs> Decision decisions already. Um, I mean, I tend to go in my own, like, you know, whenever I create characters in D&D &D or stuff, I like to be kind of like full force, balls of the wall, fighter type, so soldier might, might go that way. These things look interesting. 
but maybe more interesting to me on like a repeat uh, playthrough someday down the line. So I might go Soldier. And you know, Loki is currently airing right now, and one of, one of Loki's uh, lines in Avengers is the Soldier. So I'm gonna go Soldier. Confirm facial identification. All right, let's change this up. Facial structure. What is most like me? Uh, that maybe? Skin tone? They don't have beet red, do they? <laughs> uh, we're not gonna worry about making him look like exactly like me or anything. Complexion. This one looks cool. I like that. Oh, you can look around. Look around! This is like Mario 64. Keep the default face! <laughs> keep default player. I can keep default player. Back. I don't know. I don't want to... Facial identification. Honestly, I probably don't want to waste too much time working on that. Everyone loving default beard. Default chef is best. Chat is mad. <laughs> I, you know what? Uh, this will probably come up a lot because I know there's a lot of making choices in this. I do not care if Chad is mad. I only care if uh, everybody's having a good time watching. Shepard's got them crazy eyes. Um, yeah, I'll keep it. I mean, I want to be able to recognize Shepard when I see him out and about, right? If I ever do. So we'll, we'll, we can keep the... Uh, the default, I suppose. Profile reconstruction complete. Right. Eric Shepard, Earthborn, Soul Survivor, Soldier. Gotcha. Is that relatively the same as what I had whenever I started the started this and before I restarted? I'm not really sure. Hmm. Except, unable to change any settings. Let's do it. Identification. Exactly confirmed. the same. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, normal. Auto level up. Auto level up. That doesn't sound good. We'll probably not auto level up. I want to be able to control what I level up. Level scaling. Legendary or classic. Again, I'll let you guys help me out with that. Subtitles on. Squad power usage. Defensive. None. Defensive all. What's that one mean, too? Legendary, probably for the best. Legendary, streamlined. We'll. Legendary seems to be... I mean, this is what this game was remade with, so let's go Legendary. Um, squad power. None defensive all. What should that one be? All. AI intelligence for squad. Okay. We'll have auto save on. And continue. Well, what about Shepard? Earthborn, but no record of his family. Doesn't have one. He was raised on the streets, learned to look out for himself. He saw his whole unit die on a cruise. A he could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind I'm of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remnants of an ancient space-bearing civilization. In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts reveal, revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis of this incredible... Found cool stuff on Mars. <laughs> the Arcturus Prime relay is in range. It's called Mass Shading Effect. Transmission sequence. That's what it's called. Look out, Jenkins. We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. Joker. My new Joker's 
voice, Joker's voice sounds familiar. Is that Toto 360? Yep, it's Toto 360. Board is green. Approach run has begun. I do strings. like what a hundred years in the future and we can reach the furthest stars so check outside of the galaxy or check. internal is it intergalactic as well all systems online drift just under 1500k 1500 is good only the milk captain will be pleased Whoa. i hate that guy oh uh, yeah that's Seth Green. nihilus gave you a compliment so nihilus. you hate him like Darth Nihilus. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. Specters. You're paranoid. The council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. I agree. You're overreacting. Cut the chatter! Uh, I agree. They don't send specters on shakedown runs. So there's more going on here than the captain's Okay, so on. I have a voice. Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. Comm buoy. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? I wonder, so there's no time limit on uh, how I need to respond. So I can take my time throughout the game and do my, uh, figure out what I want to respond with. Is there a conventional, like, good, neutral, bad thing here. I know this is, what, 2007 when this was made, so dialogue trees and choices and stuff like that probably, uh, they probably were relatively new, but that was kind of like what Nice Republic did. Gotcha, good and evil. Is he upset? I'm assuming, I'm assuming he's good. He sounds angry. Something must have gone wrong with the mission. <laughs> Captain always sounds like that when he's talking to me. Can't possibly imagine why. Saving. Ooh, we get to play. Press the mission computer. Codex. The Alliance is the government and military of humanity beyond soul. Soul being our sun or our solar system, I guess, right? Okay, uh, in 2069, Armstrong Outpost at Shackleton Crater becomes the first human settlement on Luna, so on the moon, in 2069. Formally founded on July 24th, the 100th anniversary of the first lunar landing. Cool. Lowell City! Ugh! What's Lowell City? Eos Chasma becomes the first human settlement on Mars. Man, that's a damn shame. We're not going to go to Mars, are we? Because I don't want to go to fucking Lowell. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you haven't been watching Blindly very long. Um, ooh, man, that's sensitive. Uh, okay. Energy Corporation demonstrates helium-3 fuel extraction from the atmosphere of Saturn. 2142, construction of a jump zero station. Begins beyond the orbit of Pluto. I wonder, was Pl is Pluto considered a planet in, uh, in Mass Effect? I, don't think, I think it might have still been a planet then, in 2007. Prospectors discover the Prothean ruins at Pro Methi, Methi, Methi I don't know, uh, on Mars. Translation of the data leads humans to the 
Mass Relay, System Alliance founded to coordinate exploration and colonization of extrasolar worlds. Okay, so kind of like Expanse, right? We have a uh, like a society that's spread throughout the solar system. Once we decrypt like the data from this thing found on Mars, suddenly we're going to be able to go and colonize outside of the solar system. Pluto was demoted in 2006. So we just got in there. That's cool. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh, a shipping accident at Singapore International Spaceport exposes downwind communities to containers of dust form element zero. Alliance begins construction of a station. What's dust form element zero? Roughly 30% of the children born in Singapore after element zero exposure suffer from cancerous growths. System Alliance begins settlement of Earth's first extrasolar colony world, the planet Demeter. What's the what's Demeter? What's that base from? Okay, so this cancerous growth of thirty percent of people uh, in Singapore. Shepherd's born in twenty one fifty four, twenty fifty five, a year after he was born. Uh, Systems Alliance completed portions of the station as a headquarters. A year later, some children of, of Singapore exhibit minor telekinetic abilities. Oh, okay. Uh, 2157, Turians. Turians encounter human explorers. The first contact war. Occupation and liberation of the human colony of Shanxi. Turian. So we encounter a uh, an alien ex uh, species and they have a war. Occupation and liberation of the first human colony. Okay. In 2158, humans learn the potential of biotics, and an international effort to track element zero exposures begins. Roughly 10% of exposed children show some level of biotic ability, or uh, telekinesis, right? Uh, 2160, System Alliance Parliament is formed, so an actual government is formed. Humans establish embassy on Citadel? An embassy on the Citadel. Okay. Slavers attack the Alliance colony of Mendor. Slavers, all right. So all these alien species. I wonder what the Citadel is. Uh, Skyline Blitz. The pirates and slavers attack hmm, the human capital. Okay. Man, there's a lot of really big world building already just in this codex. Thresher malls devour the Alliance colony of Akuz. Fuck, okay. Uh, in retaliation of the Skyline Blitz, the Alliance fleet wipes out an army of slavers on the moon of Torfan. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I think we're caught up with that. Is there anything personal here that I didn't learn already? Uh, you were born on Earth, never knew your parents, eager to better life, joining the Alliance. Uh, you volunteered for an expedition of Akuz, a lush world of the outskirts of Alliance space suddenly dropped out of contact. Arriving on the surface, you patrol found the settlement intact, but no survivors. At nightfall, the Thresher Mall struck. Mindless abominations of teeth and tentacles that rose from beneath the earth. Ah, that's, that sucks. Constant gunfire couldn't drown the shrieks of your fellow soldiers as they were dragged down to a gruesome death. Fifty marines died on the coups. You were the only one to make it back to the landing zone alive. A monument on the planet commemorates the massacre. A grim reminder of this of the price humanity must pay as they spread throughout the stars. Alright. Cool. Uh, I, I apologize for anybody that doesn't want to just watch a dude read, but you're going to be watching a dude read a little bit here. Put my face came up a little bit. Alright. Game came out in 2007. We got a nice, fresh coat of paint here. Can I interact with you? The captain's waiting for you in the comm room, Commander. You probably don't want to keep the captain waiting, Commander. All right, fine. Do you have anything to say? You want me to just get out of here, Commander? Okay, I'm going. 
Dude, you're not even looking at the screen. Look at you. What are you looking at? Oh, the stars. They're still pretty to me. Okay. Pattern recognition suggests that is a door. See, sometimes when I'm playing games like this and I really get, like, invested in the role, I'm like, well, I wouldn't run all over the place. I'd walk like this, but that's boring. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? Uh, I heard you arguing. He wants to see I'm me. I'm on my way to give him a status update right now. With all due respect, sir, maybe he'll finally tell you what we're really doing out here. Okay, so if this is good, this is neutral, and this is bad, what is this? Like, extra dialogue tree, and if you don't want, if you, like, if you want to just end this stuff, maybe go here, but this is, like, extra, maybe? Give more info, usually? Uh, that makes sense. It's not, like, ultra bad, right? Gotcha. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? All we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system. Why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. Hmm. Stealth systems. What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors, cutting edge technology. Okay. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype. The Normandy. Type. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks, too. Plus, there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious the shakedown run is just a cover. Do you have a problem with the captain? No, sir. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated special forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first yeah, contact Turians was the war. first contact lost a lot war. of friends when the Turians hit us. I mean, that was long ago. I know the dates. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board. Especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military. But Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. Oh, Codex. Humanity's first contact with an alien race occurred in 2157. At that oh, time, the Alliance right allowed survey fleets to activate any dormant mass relays discovered. A practice considered dangerous and irresponsible by Council-aligned races. When a Turian patrol discovered a human fleet attempting to activate a relay, they attacked. One human vessel survived, retreating to the colony of Shanxi. The Turians followed, quickly defeating the local forces. Shanxi was occupied. The first and, to date, only human world to be conquered by an alien species. Uh. The Turians believed the handful of ships they defeated represented the bulk of human defenses. So they were unprepared when the second fleet, under Admiral Castany Drescher, launched a strong counter-offensive, okay. evicting them from Shanxi. The Turians mobilized for full-scale war, drawing the attention of the rest of the galaxy. The Council quickly intervened, forcing a truce. Fortunately for humanity, the first contact war was ended with a diplomatic solution. Okay. 
So no one really won that war. It kind of just stopped there. Okay. Hmm. The mass relays. The Turians attacked when they saw him trying to activate it. Okay. The Systems Alliance is an independent supranational government representing the interests of humanity as a whole. The Alliance is responsible for the governance and defense of all extrasolar colonies and stations. The Alliance grew out of the various national space programs as a matter of practicality. Mm -hmm. Saul's planets had been explored and exploited through piecemeal national efforts. The expense of colonizing entire new solar systems could not be met by any one country. Yeah. With humans knowing that alien contact was inevitable, there was enough political will to jointly fund an international effort. Okay. Still, the Alliance was often disregarded by those on Earth until the first contact war. While the national governments dithered and bickered over who should lead the effort to liberate Shanxi, the Alliance fleet struck decisively. Post-war public approval gave the Alliance the credibility to establish its own parliament and become the galactic face of humanity. Interesting. So are there still nations and, and like, borders and stuff on Earth? You know, I wonder, like, the Alliance is a government, and they are, like, a, a military or humanity's face for galactic stuff, but I wonder if Earth still has its own stuff. <laughs> Humanity's first content. The systems of okay. human. All right, cool. We haven't gotten very far, I'm afraid, but, yeah. Ah! What's happening to me? <laughs> Legendary edition. <laughs> oh, doctor. What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding. I think you're gonna get some action. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew has. members in the infirmary. Stand down, Jenkins. You need to calm down, Corporal. A good soldier stays cool, even under fire. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with the Spectre on board. Just treat this like every other assignment you've had, and everything will work out. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself on a coos. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show oh, the brass yeah. what I can do. But all my guys died. You're young, Corporal. You have a long career ahead of you. Don't do something stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not going to screw this up. Hmm. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Mm -hmm. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I hope we get a chance to see him in action. I heard Nihilus took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. Hmm. So, but... So Spectres can be other species, so are they part of the Citadel thing that they were talking about, maybe? Hmm. Why don't we have any of our own people in there? Spectres usually come from the Council races, Council races. like the Turians. We've been trying to get a human accepted into their ranks for years now. So far, it hasn't happened. Hey, Commander, you'd make a good Spectre. They're always getting dropped into impossible situations, forced to survive unbeatable odds, just like you on a coos. Hmm. Maybe we will be, uh, a specter. Maybe that's where the story's going. I try not to think about a coos. 
Sorry, Commander. I I didn't mean to offend you. I I respect what you did there. We all do. Let's not dwell on the past, Commander. Was there something else you needed? Eden Prime. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. Eden Prime. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill Must be pretty and across the gorgeous. It's called the Eden. The main settlement. It was gorgeous. But when I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even paradise gets boring after a while. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime is one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. There's got to be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. Mm, the captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. Got more Codex. Spectres are agents from the Office of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance and answer only to the Citadel Council. They are elite military operatives, granted the authority to deal with threats to peace and stability in whatever way they deem necessary. They operate independently or in groups of two or three. Some are empathetic peacekeepers, resolving disputes through diplomacy. Others are cold-blooded assassins, ruthlessly dispatching problem individuals. All get the job done one way or another, often operating outside the bounds of galactic law. Okay. The Spectres were founded after the Salarians joined the Council. For many years, they operated in secrecy as backroom problem solvers. Only after the Krogan rebellions did their Krogan activities rebellions. become publicized. Assignment of a Spectre is less contentious than a military deployment, but makes it clear that the Council is concerned about a situation. So they're kind of like uh, military Jedi. Interesting. Spectres are agents from the... Roughly 1,200 years ago, the Turians were invited to join the Citadel Council to fulfill the role of galactic peacekeepers. The Turians have the largest fleet in Citadel space, and they make up the single largest portion of the Council's military forces. As their territory and influence has spread, the Turians have come to rely on the Salarians for military intelligence and the Asari for diplomacy. Okay. Despite a somewhat colonial attitude towards the rest of the galaxy, the ruling hierarchy understands they would lose more than they would gain if the other two races were ever removed. Turians come from an autocratic society that values discipline and possesses a strong sense of personal and collective honor. There is lingering animosity between Turians and humans over the First Contact War of 2157, which is known as the Relay 314 incident to the Turians. Officially, however, the two species are allies, and they enjoy civil, if cool, diplomatic relations. Hmm. Okay, so there's a lot of species that we're already being introduced here to. We have, um... The Turians, which a Turian is like, uh... Nihilus? Nihilus? Is that his name? Like Nihilus. Um. Ugh. Ugh. So Nihilus is a Turian. They said something about Krogan Rebellion at one point. But there's the Silurians? Anyway, all these, like, species kind of have, like, a central galactic law. So there's humanity in the alliance of the humans, they are part of a greater uh, group that is governed by the council, I'm going to assume, right? Hmm. So we'll probably learn more as we go. I like this armor, it's pretty cool looking. I think they said that we are uh, Marines, right? Or I was a Marine. What's up, dude? This dude's got a scouter. All right. Is this the captain? No, this is Nihilus. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. What 
sort of boat. I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. They say it's a paradise. Yes, a paradise. Serene, tranquil, safe. Eden Prime has become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? Do you know something? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? Hmm. I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than that guy's a voice. shakedown run. Okay. Hmm. So, I should probably always go with the leftmost prompts first so I don't miss them, I'm assuming, right? Keith David. I know that guy, right? Who's Keith David? I, that name sounds super familiar. I'm sorry I do this, guys, but I will constantly be looking things up and trying to experience the story as much as possible. And the actors and all that stuff. Ah! Oh, fuck yeah, I know this guy. This guy's fucking awesome. Fuck yeah, Keith David. I figured there was something you weren't telling us. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. Covert pickup. There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years 50, ago. 50,000 years Their ago. legacy still remains. The mass relays. So the Protheans. The ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is big shit. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Okay. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Why didn't we keep the beacon for ourselves? You humans don't have the best reputation. Some species see you as selfish, too unpredictable, too independent, even dangerous. Well, that's all. That's all. Sharing that beacon will improve relations with the Council. Plus, we need their scientific expertise. They know more about the Protheans than we do. The beacon is not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate. I should have known. Guess that explains why I bump into him every time I turn around. The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel. Am I going to become a Spectre? The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, shows how far the Alliance has come. Not many could have survived what you went through on Akuz. You showed a remarkable will to live, a particularly useful talent. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. Alright, I'm kind of like a Nihilus. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. Okay. You will be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. Yes. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years Ruled the galaxy. Years. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees. Galactic so it's like the Roman Empire that built the roads. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society. And without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. Okay. Eden Prime. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. 
Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology, even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on mm -hmm. Earth. That yeah, was just a small tech. data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? Yeah. What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of citizen space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliance ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. Terminus. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low key. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. Huh? What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. What's wrong with Eden Prime? Bring it up on screen. It's so beautiful. On screen. Get down! Something we know, something we don't know. Do you recognize it? Out after that, no com traffic at all. It just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold the 38.5. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more oh, Fuck yeah, there's a giant hand of a small like. strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Alenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Hmm. You know, when I see Shepard, I just see Matthew Fox from Lost. So I'm going to choose to accept that Matthew Fox could play this in a movie. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Secondary. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. Okay. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! All right. We are approaching drop point two. Is this the full Normandy, or is this a drop ship? I don't know how big the Normandy is. Saving. Ship perimeter secure, Commander. You, you know <laughs> what's strange? I'm almost more excited for a cutscene to end so I can go check out the codex. <laughs> Roughly 50,000 years ago, the Protheans were the only spacefaring species in the galaxy. They vanished in a swift galactic extinction. Only the legacy of their empire remains. They are believed to have built the mass relays and the citadel, which have allowed numerous species to explore and expand throughout the galaxy. Prothean ruins are found on worlds across the galaxy. While surprisingly intact for their age, functioning examples of Prothean paleotechnology are rare. Mm. Time and generations of looters have picked their dead cities and derelict stations clean. Some believe the Protheans meddled in the evolution of younger races. 
The Hanar homeworld of Kaje, for example, shows clear evidence of former Prothean occupation. The presence of a former Prothean observation post on Mars has caused a rebirth of interventionary evolutionists among humans. These individuals believe the god myths of ancient civilizations are misremembered encounters with aliens. Gotcha. Okay. So ancient aliens. I wonder if the Protheans meddled with the evolution of humans. Hmm. So they did the mass relays and the citadel where uh, all the species kind of congregate and there's that council. So we'll probably be going to the citadel at some point here. Alright, uh, what else have I missed? So it'll flash if there's a new thing, right? The terminus systems are located on the far side of the Attican Traverse, beyond the space administered by the Citadel Council or claimed by the Human Systems Alliance. It is populated by a loose affiliation of minor species, united only in their refusal to acknowledge the political authority of the Council or adhere to the Citadel Conventions. Their independence comes at a price. The terminus is fraught with conflict. War among the various species is common, as governments and dictators constantly rise and fall. The region is a haven for illegal activities, particularly piracy and the slave trade. At least once a year, a fleet from the terminus invades the nearby Attican Traverse. These attacks are typically small raids against poorly defended colonies. The Council rarely retaliates, as sending patrols into the Terminus systems could unify the disparate species against their common foe, triggering a long and costly war. Hmm. So Terminus doesn't recognize the political authority of the Council or adhere to the Citadel Conventions. Okay, Citadel Conventions. So like a like a constitutional convention. They're, they kind of like come together and work with each other there's no real uh, like government with all species they just kind of come together then all right i i believe oh i haven't noticed this secondary oh okay so there's primary there's secondary ships okay so the primary ones are the ones that talk the secondary probably don't talk light lag prevents sensing in real time at great distances well that makes sense Okay. Just talking about the sensors. This is a little more in depth than the primary, I would say. Okay. All right. How do I? Okay. So we got Jenkins here. This place got hit hard, Commander. Hostiles everywhere. Keep your guard up. Okay, pretty conventional. R2 to fire. L2 to aim. I'm assuming these are bad and not uh, people that were mercilessly attacked. What other things do I got? I crouch. Gas bags. They don't look harmless. They're pulsating. Are you going to attack me? Alright. I was gonna fucking shoot these things, by the way. Where's the giant hand? I don't see it. Ooh, pretty though. Hold L1 to switch weapons? Whoa. Alright. 
Alright, so right now it's just these same four weapons, right? I have a pistol out, Avenger, Lancer, Storm. Lancer? Is that the one that I want? I'm not really sure. bag. Oh. No, Jenkins! Alright, so it seems like this weapon is... What's the right one? all excited for his big mission. We'll see that he receives a proper service once the mission is complete. But I need you to stay focused. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, okay. So if I do this, my weapons are the bottom. These are, these are mine. Doesn't matter here. What's like the basic gun. I'm assuming this is long range, burst short range, Lancer maybe I guess is the one that I want. Lower press circles your weapons, never forget Jenkins, Avenger, Lancer, okay. Lancer, yeah. Um, this guy currently has a pistol out, I think. Maybe we'll have him do it. Okay, we can control that to a point. Medi gel is needed to heal injured squad members. Medi gel can be used to bypass encryption, but can be acquired by defeating enemies in open battles. Okay. Take cover? Oh, I can't take cover. Coming up some burned out buildings here, Shepard. A lot of bodies. I'm gonna check it out. I'll try to catch up with you at the next side. Just learning so I can take cover just by running into cover. It looks like I have a melee attack. Can I jump over cover? No, it doesn't seem like it. Leave those guys alone. Attack your target.
want to cover the area well. Is there a run button? Oop. I don't know what the hell that is. What's this? Use R to aim at a target. Select the power with L. Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams of the 212. I like her. You want any charge here, sir? The 212. It's Obi Wan's division, isn't it? Are you wounded, Williams? A few scrapes and burns. Nothing serious. The others weren't so lucky. Oh, man. We were patrolling the perimeter when the attack hit. We tried to get off a distress call, but they cut off our communications. I've been fighting for my life ever since. Where's the rest of your squad? We tried to double back to the beacon, but we walked into an ambush. I don't think any of the others... I think I'm the only one left. Any idea what kind of enemy we're facing? I think they're Geth. Yeah. The Geth haven't been seen outside the Vale in nearly 200 years. Geth. Why are they here now? They must have come for the beacon. The dig site is close, just over that rise. It might still be there. We could use your help, Williams. Aye, aye, sir. It's time for payback. Payback time. But, first we investigate. What else do you know about the Geth? Just what I remember from history class back in school. They're synthetics, non-organic life forms with limited AI programming, created by the Quarians a few centuries ago. They were supposed to be a source of cheap labor, but ended up turning on the Quarians and drove them into exile. Oh. Well, after okay. that, they just kind of disappeared behind the Perseus Veil. Nobody's really heard much from them since. Mm. Tell me everything you know about the Beacon. They were doing some digging out here to extend the monorail and expand the colony. A few weeks ago, they unearthed some Prothean ruins. And the Beacon. Suddenly, every scientific expert in the colony was interested. That's when they brought us in to secure the site. I don't know much about the Beacon itself, but I heard one of the researchers say this could be the biggest scientific discovery of the century. What happened to the researchers at the dig site? I don't know. They set up camp near the beacon. The 232 was with them. Maybe their unit fared better than mine. Describe what happened leading up to the attack. We were sent out a couple of nights ago from the main colony to secure the area. Seemed like a routine patrol until the Geth hit us. Never knew they were coming. Have you seen a Turian Spectre around here? There aren't any Turians on Eden Prime. None that I've ever met. Not sure I'd be able to tell if one was a Spectre anyway. If you saw this guy, you'd know. Carries enough firepower to wipe out a whole platoon. Luckily, he's on our side. Sick. Sorry. That sounds like Cardinal. Like I said, no Turians. Move out. Huh. It is.
Alright, I got three talent points. Hmm. Wow, the common witch just uh, gave out five subs. Thank you very much. Ooh, opens in conversation. Options in conversation. Also, options in conversation. All right, well, let's do assault rifles. Charm and either soldier or intimidate, I would say, maybe. my helmet off. Okay. He's got two points. So throw. Okay. Barrier. Decryption. Maybe decryption. First aid. Ashley. Okay. Pistols, assault rifles, combat armor, assault training. Ashley's a soldier. Well, let's do this. Okay. And let's check out the codex. Is there anything new? Doesn't seem like it. Roughly. Oh, this is flashy. The Geth are a humanoid race of networked AIs. They were created by the Quarians 300 years ago as tools of labor and war. When the Geth showed signs of self-evolution, the Quarians attempted to exterminate them. The Geth won the resulting war. This example has led to legal, systematic repression of artificial intelligences in galactic society. The Geth possess a unique distributed intelligence. An individual has rudimentary animal instincts, but as their numbers and proximity increase, the apparent intelligence of each individual improves. In groups, they can reason, analyze situations, and use tactics, as well as any organic race. Geth's space is located at the trailing end of the Perseus Arm, beyond the lawless Terminus systems. The Perseus Veil, an obscuring dark nebula of opaque gas and dust, lies between their space and the Terminus systems. Mm. Geth. Geth, Geth, Geth. It'll take me a little bit to learn all the menus and all that stuff, guys. We'll just keep going for now.
creepy. Sorry, I'm still learning, everybody. Combat hard suits use a dual layer system to protect the wearer. The inner layer consists of fabric armor with kinetic padding. Areas that don't need to be flexible, such as the chest or shins, are reinforced with sheets of lightweight ablative ceramic. The outer layer consists of automatically generated kinetic barriers. Objects traveling above a certain speed will trigger the barrier's reflex system and be deflected, provided there is enough energy left in the shield's power cell. Armored hard suits are sealable to protect the wearer from extremes of temperature and atmosphere. Standard equipment includes an onboard mini frame and a communications, navigation, and sensing suite. The mini frame is designed to accept and display data from a weapon's smart targeting system to make it easier to locate and eliminate enemies. Kinetic barriers, more commonly called shields, provide protection against most mass accelerator weapons. Whether on a starship or a soldier's suit of armor, the basic principle remains the same. Kinetic barriers are repulsive mass effect fields projected from tiny emitters. These shields safely deflect small objects traveling at rapid velocities. This affords protection from bullets and other dangerous projectiles, but still allows the user to sit down without knocking away their chair. The shielding afforded by kinetic barriers does not protect against extremes of temperature, toxins, or radiation. Mm. I wonder is how much exploration is rewarded. This is the dig site. The beacon was right here. It must have been moved. By who? Our side or the Gath? Hard to say. Maybe we'll know more after we check out the research camp. You think anyone got out of here alive? If they were lucky. Maybe hiding up in the camp. It's just on the top of this ridge, up the ramps. Change of plans, Shepard. There's a small spaceport. Small spaceport. So when I put it away, they put it away. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I wanted to go to squad. Ooh, six points. Level two. Hell yeah. Um.
wonder how... Intimidate makes you more of a renegade. Gotta make sure that's yeah, that's saving, okay. Let's go up and try to find this space port that he was talking about. Looks like they hit the camp hard. It's a good place for an ambush. Keep your guard up. Gethas are turning them into like zombies. All clear. Perimeter secure. Take a few hours for the spikes to turn people into husks. Now we know what those spikes are for. Turn your own head against us. Hmm, okay. So they put them on those spikes and they turn them like zombie people. That sucks. That door is closed. Uh, I think one of my squad members can encrypt, right? The maker. Come back. Don't worry, we'll protect you. Thank you. I think we'll be okay now. It looks like everyone's gone. You're Dr. Warren, the one in charge of the excavation. Do you know what happened to the beacon? It was moved to the spaceport this morning. Manuel and I stayed behind to help pack up the camp. When the attack came, the Marines held them off long enough for us to hide. They gave their lives to save us. No one is saved. The age of humanity is ended. Soon, only ruin and corpses will remain. <laughs> what else can you tell me about the attack? It all happened so fast. One second we were gathering up our equipment. The next we were hiding in the shed while the guests swarmed over the camp. Agents of the destroyers. Bringers of darkness. Heralds of our extinction. We could hear the battle outside. Gunfire, screams. I thought it would never end. Then everything went quiet. We just sat there, too afraid to move, until you came along. Did you notice a Turian in the area? I saw him, the prophet. 
leader of the enemy. He was here before the attack. That's impossible. Nihilus was with us in the Normandy before the attack. He could have been here. Another uh, Turian? I'm sorry. Manuel's still a bit unsettled. We haven't seen your Turian. We've been hiding in here since the attack. Can you tell me anything about the beacon? It's some type of data module from a galaxy-wide communications network. Remarkably well preserved. It could be the greatest scientific discovery of our lifetime. Miraculous new technologies, groundbreaking medical advances. Who knows what secrets are locked inside? We have unearthed the heart of evil. Awakened the beast. Unleashed the darkness. <laughs> Manuel, please, this isn't the time. What's wrong with your assistant? Manuel has a brilliant mind, but he's always been a bit unstable. Genius and madness are two sides of the same coin. Is it madness to see the future? To see the destruction rushing towards us? To understand there is no escape? No hope? No. I am not mad. I'm the only sane one left. I gave him an extra dose of his meds after the attack. I can shut him up. Williams, take us to the spaceport. You can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. Night is falling. The darkness of eternity. Hush, Manuel. Go lie down. You'll feel better once the medication kicks in. Paragon plus two. Okay. You guys don't have much in terms of your quarters, do you? Another! Saren. Saren. Nihilus. This isn't Dang your it. mission, Saren. What are you doing here? The Council thought you could use some help on this one. I wasn't expecting to find the Geth here. The situation's bad. Don't worry. I've got it under control. No! No! What is that? Off in the distance. No! What the fuck is that? It's spouting red shit. I need a codex. I badly need a codex entry. Tell me why. Like my weapon charges and you thought this world was safe until the guests showed up. Everybody stay calm out there. We're coming out, we're not armed. Is it safe? Are they gone? You're okay now. Nobody's gonna hurt you. 
Those things were crawling all around the shed. They would have found us for sure. We owe you our lives. Ah, uh, I still can't believe it. When we saw that ship, I thought it was all over. It showed up right before the attack. Knew it was trouble the second I saw it, so we made a break for the sheds. Tell me everything you remember about the attack. The three of us were working the crops when that ship showed up. We just saw it and ran. I don't know what happened to the rest of the crew. They were by the garage, over near the spaceport, right where that ship came down. No way they survived. You don't know that! We survived! If they made it to the garage, they could have had a fighting chance! Do you know anything about the Protean Beacon they dug up? We're just farmers. We heard they found something out there, but it never really mattered to us. Not until now. What else can you tell me about the ship you saw? I was too busy running to get a clear look at it. I think it landed over near the spaceport. Tell them about the noise, Gold. That awful noise. It was emitting some kind of signal as it descended. It sounded like the shriek of the damned. Only, it was coming from inside your own head. It was probably trying to block communications. Whatever it was, it felt like it was tearing right through my skull. It almost made it impossible to think. I have to go. Hey, Cole, we're just a bunch of farmers. These guys are soldiers. Maybe we should give them the stuff. Jeez, Blake, you've got to learn when to shut up. You have something to tell me, Cole? Some guys at the spaceport were running a small smuggling ring. Nothing major. In exchange for a cut of the profits, we let them store packages in our sheds. You're breaking the law, Cole. We're not hurting anybody. Hell, most of the time I don't even know what's in the packages. Just thought there might be something we could use. I found a pistol. Figured it would come in handy if those things came back. But you'll probably get more use out of it than we will. We're risking our lives to save this colony. You sure there's nothing else in here that could help us out? Yeah, there's one more thing. I was gonna sell it after this was over, but you probably deserve it more than I do. Who's your contact at the spaceport, Cole? What's his name? He's not a bad guy. I don't want to get him in trouble. Besides, I'm not a snitch. He might have something to do with this whole attack, Cole. We need his name. It's important. Yeah, okay, you're right. His name's Powell. Works the docks at the spaceport, if he's still alive. I have to go. Good luck. Skill too low. Keep pressing the wrong button. I have the Avenger and the Banshee. After the Geth secure a location, they round up and impale dead and living bodies on mechanical spikes. 
The spikes rapidly transform these victims into withered husks, extracting water and trace minerals, and replacing them with cybernetics. The cybernetics reanimate the lifeless flesh and tissue, transforming the bodies into mindless killing machines. Some Alliance soldiers refer to the husk-generating spikes as dragon's teeth, a reference to the mythological berserkers who sprang up from the earth wherever the teeth of the dragon Eris were planted. Dragon's teeth and husks bear little resemblance to other pieces of geth technology. No one is sure why a synthetic race would bother to drain the minuscule amount of recoverable resources from organic corpses, though the value of reusing them as shock troops is obvious. Dragon's teeth and husk bear little resemblance to other pieces of geth technology. Huh. Interesting. Oh, these other ones are secondary. Upgrades. Hmm. Upgrades. up on us like that nearly got you killed. I am sorry I was hiding from those creatures. My name's Pal. I saw yeah, it happen to the Venturian. The other one shot him. I need to know how Nihilus died. The other one got here first. I thought Nihilus was he gonna was be waiting, like when my dude. Showed up, he, he called him Saren. I, I think they knew each other. Your friends seemed to relax. He let his guard down. Saren killed him. Shot him right in the back. I'm just lucky he didn't see me behind the crates. We were told the Prothean Beacon was brought to the spaceport. What happened to it? It's over on the other platform. Probably where that guy Saren was headed. He hopped on the cargo train right after he killed your friend. I knew that beacon was in trouble. Everything's gone to hell since we found it. First that damn mothership showed up, then the attack. They killed everyone. Everyone. If I had been behind the crates, I'd be dead too. How come you're the only one who survived? Why didn't anyone else try to hide behind the crates? They never had a chance. I, I was already behind the crates when the attack started. Wait a minute. You were hiding behind the crates before the attack? I... Sometimes I need a nap to get through my shift. I sneak off behind the crates to grab 40 winks where the supervisor can't find me. You survived because you're lazy? If you hadn't snuck off for that nap, you'd probably be dead just like all the others. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't really want to think about it. Tell me about the Geth attack. It was quick. One minute the ship was descending, the next, those geth were swarming over the platform, thousands of them. They must have been inside that mothership. They shot anything that moved. It was a massacre. Is there anything else you can tell me about the beacon? They brought it here this morning. We loaded it up onto the train and shipped it to the other platform. Hard to believe that was only a few hours ago. Feels like a whole other life. Tell me about this mothership you saw. I've never seen anything like it before. It... It was huge. Landed over near that platform. The whole place got dark as it came down. And... It was making this noise, this... This sound that bored right into your brain. That's what woke me up. The attack came a few minutes later. Hmm... Your call's contact here on the docks, for the smuggling ring. What? No! I mean, what does it matter now? So I'm a smuggler, who cares? 
My supervisor's dead, the entire crew's dead. It doesn't matter now, does it? Anything hidden nearby that we could use against the Geth? A shipment of grenades came through last week. Nobody notices if a few small pieces go missing from the military orders. You greedy son of a bitch. We're out here trying to protect your sorry ass, and all you can think about is how you can rip us off? I never thought you'd actually need those grenades. Who'd want to attack Eden Prime? We're just a bunch of farmers. How was I supposed to know? Forget about him. He's not worth it. You're lucky the commander's here, pal. Hand over those grenades. They're yours. Take them. My smuggling days are over, I swear. A lot of Marines died here, Powell. Those grenades could have come in handy. If I were you, I'd think of some way to make it up to them. Yeah, uh, okay. There is something else I was saying. Could be worth a fortune. Experimental technology, top of the line. Take it. I don't need it. I didn't want anyone to get hurt. Really, I'm sorry. We need to find that beacon before it's too late. Take the cargo train. That's where the other Turian went. I, I, I can't stay here. I need to get away from all this. Hmm. Grenade upgrade. High explosive. Check your targets. Could be friendlies. Ah! What's happened to me? Why am I in sniper mode? I need to do go down and then hit the button. That's what I gotta do. First mode. Okay, that wasn't the best that encounter. Let's um let's look at equipment because I just got a new thing. Stinger two grenade launcher upgrades high explosive. Piercing rounds. Barrier on itself. I thought it was a barrier for me.
wanted to make sure I couldn't go up this way. I didn't want to miss anything. is terrible. <coughs> Their aim is worse. Oh, okay. If I hold on X, I have a stamina gauge here. Gotcha, gotcha. So I wanted to make sure I didn't miss any pickups. <laughs> Excuse me. Fatigued. Um. No. Okay. Oh, no. What I want to do is hit save. Yes. Accept the charges. Destroy the entire colony. Leave no evidence that we were here. So the Geth are working for Saren? And Saren's also a Spectre, isn't he? Or is he not? is evidence. Demolition charges. The Geth must have planted them. Hurry! We need to find them all and shut them down. No, shut them all down. The other things that are there any over here? I only got three minutes left. Ah! Two charges. 
charges remaining. One charge remaining. No, I'm hitting the run button and bang. Normandy, the beacon is secure. This is amazing. Actual working Prothean technology. Unbelievable. It wasn't doing anything like that when they dug it up. Something must have activated it. Roger, Normandy. Standing by. Don't get too close. Uh, Ash. Ashley. Ashley! Gotcha. Oh no! No, don't touch me! We identified the ship that touched down on Eden Prime, the Normandy, not too bad. a human alliance this vessel. Guy, it was under the command of Captain Anderson. They managed to save the colony. And the beacon. One of the humans may have used it. That's what happens, you rely on the Geth. Dr. Chakwas, I think he's waking up. You had us worried there, Shepard. How are you feeling? <sighs> Minor throbbing. Nothing serious. How long was I out? About 15 hours. 15 hours? Something happened down there with the beacon, I think. It's my fault. I must have triggered some kind of security field when I approached it. You had to push me out of the way. You had no way to know what would happen. Actually, we don't even know if that's what set it off. 
Unfortunately, we'll never get the chance to find out. The beacon exploded. A system overload, maybe. The blast knocked you cold. The lieutenant and I carried you back here to the ship. I appreciate it. Physically, you're fine. But I detected some unusual brain activity. Abnormal beta waves. I also noticed an increase in your rapid eye movement. Science typically associated with intense dreaming. I saw... I'm not sure what I saw. Death? Destruction? Nothing's really clear. Hmm. I better add this to my report. It may... Oh. Captain Anderson. How's our exo holding up, Doctor? Well, all the readings look normal. I'd say the commander's going to be fine. Glad to hear it. Shepard, I need to speak with you. In private. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll be in the mess if you need me. Sounds like that beacon hit you pretty hard, Commander. Are you sure you're okay? I don't like soldiers dying under my command. Jenkins wasn't your fault. You did a good job, Shepard. Chief Williams isn't part of the Normandy crew. I figured we could use a soldier like her. She's been reassigned to the Normandy. Williams is a good soldier. She deserves it. Lieutenant Elenko agrees with you. That's why I added her to our crew. This isn't a bad option. Intel dropped the ball, sir. We had no idea what we were walking into down there. That's why things went to hell. The Geth haven't been outside the Vale in two centuries, Commander. Nobody could have predicted this. You said you needed to see me in private, Captain? Is that a Not bad yet. option? Things look bad. Nihilus is dead. The beacon was destroyed and Geth are invading. The Council's no. going to want answers. I didn't do anything wrong, Captain. <clears throat> Hopefully the Council can see that. I'll stand behind you and It seems like Sh Shepard's tone was a lot more angry there than all the That's other responses. It seemed it's weird. Saren, that other Turian. Saren's a Spectre, one of the best. A living legend. But if he's working with the Geth, it means he's gone rogue. A rogue Spectre's trouble. Saren's dangerous, and he hates humans. Why? He thinks we're growing too fast, taking over the galaxy. A lot of aliens think that way. Most of them don't do anything about it. But Saren has allied himself with the Geth. I don't know how. I don't know why. I only know it had something to do with that beacon. You were there just before that beacon self-destructed. Did you see anything? Any clue that might tell us what Saren was after? Just before I lost consciousness, I had some kind of vision. A vision? A vision of what? I don't know what I saw. I saw synthetics. Geth, maybe. Slaughtering people. Butchering them. We need to report this to the Council, Shepard. What are we going to tell them? I had a bad dream? We don't know what information was stored in that. Lost Prothean technology, blueprints for some ancient weapon of mass destruction, whatever it was. Saren took it. But I know Saren. I know his reputation, his politics. He believes humans are a blight on the galaxy. This attack was an act of war. He has the secrets from the Beacon. He has an army of Geth at his command, and he won't stop until he's wiped humanity from the face of the galaxy. I'll find some way to take him down. It's not that easy. He's a specter. He can go anywhere, do almost anything. That's why we need the Council on our side. We prove Saren's gone rogue, and the Council will revoke his specter status. I'll contact the Ambassador, and see if he can get us an audience with the Council. He'll want to see us as soon as we reach the Citadel. We should be getting close. Head up to the bridge and tell Joker to bring us into dock. All right, we got some stuff going on. Haven't leveled up. 
Banshee 2. I'm assuming the twos mean they're just a little bit better, right? I'm gonna keep this armor on just because it looks cool for now. Check out any codex things. Sit on the left. The Citadel is an ancient deep space station, presumably constructed by the Protheans. Since the Prothean extinction, numerous species have come to call the Citadel home. It serves as the political, cultural, and financial capital of the galactic community. To represent their interests, most species maintain embassies on the Presidium, the Citadel's inner ring. The Citadel Tower in the center of the Presidium holds the Citadel Council Chambers. Council affairs often have far-reaching effects on the rest of the galactic community. Five arms, known as the wards, extend from the Presidium. Their inner surfaces have been built into cities, populated by millions of inhabitants from across the galaxy. Okay. The it's Citadel like is virtually city. indestructible. If attacked, the station can close its arms to form a solid, impregnable shell. For as long as the station has existed, an enigmatic race called the Keepers has maintained it. The Keepers. Okay. Spectres Guys, uh, real quick, before I um, continue, I am going to uh, use the bathroom real quick. So, very much appreciate everybody watching, but I do need to go use the bathroom. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. The crew could use some good news after what happened to Jenkins. Jenkins was a valuable part of this crew. Part of me feels guilty over what happened. If Jenkins was still alive, I might not be here. You're a good soldier, Williams. You belong on the <coughs> Thanks, Commander. I appreciate that. Things were pretty rough down there. Are you okay? I've seen friends die before. It comes with being a Marine. But to see my whole unit wiped out, and you never get used to seeing dead civilians. But things would have been a lot worse if you hadn't shown up. Couldn't have done it without you, Williams. Thanks, Commander. I have to admit, I was a little worried about being assigned to the Normandy. It's nice when someone makes you feel welcome. I think you're gonna fit in here just fine, Williams. Thanks, Commander. Paragon plus two. Huh. Got the Normandy all... Mapped out here, don't we? Doc. Yes, Commander. Is there something you need? How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth was too <coughs> boring to me, too safe, too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. 
so I stayed on to do my part. Ever think you made the wrong choice? Sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on Earth, or maybe taking a position at one of the new med centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. What do you know about Captain Anderson? I've served with him for a few tours now. He knows when to let things slide and when to crack the whip. The crew knows he's seen pretty much anything they'll ever run into. And he cares about the people under his command. How well do you know the lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record. Over a dozen special commendations. He tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. Mm -hmm. What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Clayton's lucky. He just gets migraines. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Codex primary technology. Biotics is the ability of rare individuals to manipulate dark energy and create mass effect fields through the use of electrical impulses from the brain. Intense training and surgically implanted amplifiers are necessary for a biotic to produce mass effect fields powerful enough for practical use. The relative strength of biotic abilities varies greatly among species and with each individual. There are three branches of biotics. Telekinesis uses mass lowering fields to levitate or impel objects. Mass raising kinetic fields are used to block or pin objects. Spatial distortion uses rapidly shifting mass fields to shred objects. Most organic species are capable of developing biotic abilities, though there are risks involved. Biotics are the result of an in utero exposure to element zero. This usually causes fatal cancers in the victim, but in rare cases, it coalesces into nodules within the fetus's developing nervous system. Mm. Combat hard suits use a dual layer Medigel is a common medicinal salve used by paramedics, EMTs, and military personnel. It combines several useful applications, a local anesthetic, disinfectant, and clotting agent all in one. Once applied, the gel is designed to grip tight to flesh until subjected to a frequency of ultrasound. It is sealable against liquids, most notably blood, as well as contaminants and gases. The gel is a genetically engineered bioplasm created by the CERTA Foundation, a medical technology megacorp based on Earth. Technically, Medigel violates council laws against genetic engineering, but to date, it has proved far too useful to ban. Hmm. Glad to see you're okay, Commander. What? We're talking. Go away. Okay. Can't interact with the terminal. That's Ashley. This is an elevator, but also there are steps. We shall take steps. Door control, open. Open, okay. Yep, cool. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Losing Jenkins is hard enough on Pearl.
See, that's where Joker is, where, is where I need to go. So I didn't see where the elevator let out. So let's go down to the elevator. What's this? Galaxy map. Go back downstairs and take the elevator down, maybe? Can't be that far. The ship's not huge. Commander, looking for some extra supplies before you head out? What have you got? Whatever you want. Armor, weapons, mods. It's not standard Alliance issue, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. Why should I pay you for my weapons and armor? My stuff doesn't come from the Alliance. I have to purchase it myself, and it's not cheap. Hell, the licenses alone have sent me back more than I'd like. But no licenses? No goods. Without the goods, I'm out of a job. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Heavy armor. Light sniper rifle number three. Okay, I don't think I can buy any of this. An upgrade of Medigel. Grenade upgrade. That seems... why not? Locker and Ashley's locker. Um, let's see. How do I equip the Medi Gel? Or does that automatically happen for me? Automatic? Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> Makes sense. Let's see what's in the back. That stuff gave me some new codex stuff. Is any of it primary? Yeah. The Mako Infantry Fighting Vehicle was designed for the System Alliance's frigates. Though the interior is cramped, the M35 is small enough to be carried in the cargo bay and easily deployed on virtually any world. With its turreted 155 millimeter mass accelerator and coaxially mounted machine gun, the Mako can provide a fire team with weapons support as well as mobility. Since Alliance Marines may be required to fight on any world, the Mako is environmentally sealed and equipped with microthrusters for use on low-gravity planetoids. The Mako is powered by a sealed hydrogen-oxygen fuel cell and includes a small element zero core. While not large enough to nullify the vehicle's mass, the core can reduce it enough to be safely airdropped. When used in conjunction with thrusters, it also allows the Mako to extricate itself from difficult terrain. Hmm. 
Biotics is the ability... When subjected to an electrical current, the rare material dubbed element zero, or ESO, emits a dark energy field that raises or lowers the mass of all objects within it. This mass effect mass is effect. used in countless ways, from generating artificial gravity to manufacturing high-strength construction materials. Okay. It is most prominently used to enable faster-than-light space travel. ESO is generated when solid matter, such as a planet, ESO, is affected zero. by the energy of a star going supernova. The material is common in the asteroid debris that orbits neutron stars and pulsars. These are dangerous places to mine, requiring extensive use of robotics, telepresence, and shielding to survive the incredible radiation from the dead star. Only a few major corporations can afford the setup costs required to work these primary sources. Humanity discovered refined element zero at the Prothean Research Station on Mars allowing them to create mass effect fields and develop FTL travel. By element zero can increase or decrease the mass of a volume of space-time when subjected to an electrical current. With a positive current, mass is increased. With a negative current, mass is decreased. The stronger the current, the greater the magnitude of the dark energy mass effect. In space, low mass fields allow FTL travel and inexpensive surface-to-orbit transit. High-mass fields create artificial gravity and push space debris away from vessels. Oh, In manufacturing, okay. low-mass fields permit the creation of evenly blended alloys, while high-mass compaction creates dense, sturdy construction materials. The military makes extensive use of mobility-enhancing technologies, with mass effect utilizing fighting vehicles standard frontline issue in most military forces. Mass effect fields are also essential in the creation of kinetic barriers or shields to protect against enemy. Gotcha. By Omni tools are handheld devices that combine a computer microframe, sensor analysis pack, and manufacturing fabricator. Versatile and reliable, an Omni tool can be used to analyze and adjust the functionality of most standard equipment, including weapons and armor, from a distance. The fabrication module can rapidly assemble small three-dimensional objects from common reusable industrial plastics, ceramics, and light alloys. This allows for field repairs and modifications to most standard items, as well as the reuse of salvaged equipment. Hmm. Omni tools are standard issue for soldiers and first in. Okay, cool. All right, we uh, made it there. I think that's most of the ship. So, let's go up the elevator. And then go see Joker. Joker's upstairs. And in the back. more places that I haven't looked. I mean, this I assume is the exit door. Yeah, Joker in the front, yeah. Seen everything, but haven't talked to everybody. I will be quite upset if I haven't talked to everybody. This gives me a codex thing. Don't see one though. This must be in secondary here. Military jargon. Shore away, I I ASAP belay bridge captain's mast. Combat, Information Center, Damage Control. Freaking new guys. <laughs> Alright, uh, Light Amplified Detection, Shore Party, Spacer. Okay. So 
no one in here. Caden didn't have anything to say, did he? Glad to see you're okay, Commander. He's just glad to see me. Oh, okay. There's a section over here I didn't find. Where the captain is. Go speak to Joker when you're ready. Alright. I've done it. <laughs> no extended dialogue with those two. Got it. Talk to Joker. Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. Just now, huh? See that taxpayer money at work. Ooh, that's the Citadel. Oh no, okay, that's a mass relay that takes us to where the Citadel is. Gotcha. The Citadel's supposed to be huge with like millions of people, right? I would say this is it. <laughs> Look at the size of that ship. The Ascension, flagship of the Citadel fleet. Well, well size isn't ship. everything. Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower, too. Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side, then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. Clearance granted. You may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance operator. Roger, Alliance Tower. Normandy out. Music's awesome. Normandy, this is Alliance Tower. Please proceed to dock 422. Alright, we're on the Citadel. Outrage! The Council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. No. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Seren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action! You don't get to make demands of the Council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Seren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Hmm. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. Wait, oh, fucking shot at my dude, man. Saren's a threat to every human colony out there. He needs to be stopped. The Council has to listen to us. Settle down, Commander. You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. That's Saren's fault. Yeah, whose fault, fault is here. that? Then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. Top level. And that's why I hate politicians. Yeah. Ooh. Cool. Wow. Wow. Okay, so it's a big giant ring. That's probably where it gets gravity. I like the fake sky.
Sorry, I can just spend a long time looking here. Okay. Ashley. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. You seem distressed. Is there something I can do to help? Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? This is all going so wrong, and it is the Asari consort's fault. She's the one who started all this. What did this Asari do to get you so upset? I cannot speak more about this problem. It is too sensitive. Suffice it to say, she has compromised my authority as a diplomat. Compromise authority? Where can I find this Asari consort? She is across the bridge from here. Her offices are easy enough to spot. Good day, human. I like hearing him talk. I want one of these in my party. It better happen. Please greet him. Human, it is always same good voice? to see your kind. I am Ambassador Kalen. Genuine query. Is there something I can do for you this day? Genuine query. Why do you explain what you're about to say? Our people communicate less through words and more through scent and slight movements. Plainly, we discovered our vocal expression was not enough to convey the feelings of so our they're just being kind to, us. to other species. Why do you bother, Kaelin? These Earth Clan don't really care about our ways. Remorseful response, Tim. Are they the same? You don't truly believe that. And if you do, I am very sorry for you. Tell me more about your species. Genuine enthusiasm. I delight in telling the history of my people. It is agreeable to share our culture with others. Tell me about the history and origins of the Elcor. The Elcor were just beginning to explore Council space when the Asari first made contact with us. With their help, we discovered the relay closest to our system, and from there the Citadel. Proudly, Proudly. In one lifetime, we established a regular route to the Citadel and quickly became one of the more active species living on this great station. Interesting. I'd like to know more about the culture of the Elcor. Frankly, we Elcor prefer the safety and familiarity of our own colonies to the confines of space travel. Our society is built on small, tight-knit groups. Though we are always welcoming to outsiders, our government tends to be very stable. Our people are not very comfortable with sudden changes. What do you do here? Modestly. I work to bring the problems and the requests of the Elcor groups to the attention of the Council. Ha! They only give us these positions to keep us quiet. The Council doesn't care about our races. Chastising rebuke. Your tone is inappropriate, dear. <laughs> this human is not to blame for your malcontent or your misconceived suspicions. Goodbye, Ambassador. Sincere farewell. Good day to you, human. Enjoy your time on the Citadel. Earth Clan, you are in the wrong place, I think. Your ambassador is next door in the large office. Chastising remark. Don't be so rude, Dan. These guys are funny. At least introduce yourself. <sighs> I am Din Korlak. 
Volus Ambassador, Volus. is there something I can do for you, Earth Clan? What is this place? You are in the embassy for the Volus and the Elcor. So they share an embassy. The is next door, in his own office. In this shared space, I aid my fellow Volus when I'm not being interrupted. I'd like to know more about the Volus. I'm sure our history and culture would bore you, Earth Clan. Actually, I would like to know more about your history. My people came to the Citadel shortly after the Asari and Salarians had discovered it. We were instrumental in establishing a standardized galactic economy. However, despite our long association with the Citadel, and our many contributions to galactic society, we still do not hold a seat on the council. <clears throat> Question, are we speaking, like, a galactic language that sounds like English, or are, did, has English been a thing that's, like, all these other societies are part of now? Translator implants. Hmm. Cool, okay. Tell me about Volus culture. We are tribal by nature, but our ways are not violent. We barter and trade our lands and tribe members in order to increase status. Larger tribes often engulf smaller ones and eventually split again. Our society is very malleable, and our government is always shifting and changing. Since we're not physically adept, we trade our services for protection. Hmm. What is it you do here? I look out for the best interests of the Volus people. No easy task, considering how often we are overlooked by the Council. Chastising rebuke, Dim. The Council favors your species greatly. You are naive. The Earth Clan will be invited to the Council long before our species will. Why aren't the Volus or Elcor part of the Council? All species must prove themselves before they join the Council. All but the Earth Clans, it would seem. Dismissive. Ignore the Volus Ambassador, human. <laughs> he is incorrect in his assessment. Really? How long have we been waiting? How long do you think we'll continue to wait? Bah, this talk is wasted on I kinda humans. think that the council should have at least one of everyone. Why so cranky? You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Din. You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the council has granted you great favor. Chastising rebuke, Din. Your species has always been granted many concessions. Volus territory has expanded tenfold since coming to the Citadel. <clears throat> Details. We still have no real say in the decisions that affect Citadel space. Goodbye, Ambassador. Yes, yes. Good day, Earth Clan. Ah! Ah! Look at this thing! I must speak! It won't speak. It's like cute and creepy. That's a keeper. Oh, okay. That's the things that, like, maintain the Citadel. Alrighty. Nope, put that away. Didn't mean to get that out. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be able to put it out. Uh, Codex. The Citadel, the Council, is an executive committee composed of representatives from the Asari Republics, the Turian Hierarchy, and the Salarian Union. Right, they are the ones that Salarian. Though they have no official they... power over the independent governments of other species. I feel like I've seen the middle the Council's species before, decisions like carry Mark great weight throughout the galaxy. No single council race is strong enough to defy the other two, 
and all have a vested interest in compromise and cooperation. Each of the council species has general characteristics associated with the various aspects of governing the galaxy. The Asari are typically seen as diplomats and mediators. The Salarians no. gather intelligence and information. One on the right. The Turians provide the bulk of the military and peacekeeping forces. One on the left. Any species granted an embassy on the Citadel is considered an associate member, bound by the accords of the Citadel conventions. Associate members may bring issues to the attention of the Council, though they have no input on the decision. Hmm. The Human Systems Alliance became an associate member of the Citadel in 2165. Gotcha. Spectre, the Citadel. The Elcor are a Citadel species native to the high gravity world Dakuna. High gravity. They are massive creatures, standing on four muscular legs for increased stability. Elcor moves slowly, an evolved response to an environment where a fall can be lethal. This has colored their psychology, making them deliberate and conservative. Elcor's speech is ponderous and monotone. Among themselves, scent, slight movements, and sub-vocalized infrasound convey shades of meaning that make a human smile seem as subtle as a fireworks display. Hmm. Since their subtlety can lead to misunderstandings with other species, the Elcor often go out of their way to clarify when they are being sarcastic, amused, or angry. I wonder what those emotions Dakuna's high gravity like. impedes mountain formation. Most of the world consists of flat, open plains, which prehistoric Elcor wandered across in small family bands. Modern Elcor still prefer open sky and can become restless and uncomfortable on long starship journeys. Mm. The Volus are a member species of the Citadel with their own embassy, but they are also a client race of the Turians. Client Centuries ago, they were voluntarily absorbed into the hierarchy, effectively trading their mercantile prowess for Turian military protection. Mm. Erun, their homeworld, lies far beyond the normal life zone of its star. However, the world has a high-pressure greenhouse atmosphere that traps enough heat to support an ammonia-based biochemistry. That's why he's got the As suit. As a result, the Volus must wear pressure suits and breathers when dealing with other species, as conventional nitrogen-oxygen air <clears throat> mixtures are poisonous to them. Poisonous. And in the low-pressure atmospheres tolerable to most species, their flesh will actually split open. Ooh. Volus culture is tribal, bartering lands and even people to gain status. This culture of exchange inclines them to economic pursuits. It was the Volus who authored the Unified Banking Act, and they continue to monitor and balance the Citadel economy. Bartering people to gain status. Do they mean slaves or just like employees? Slaves. Gotcha. Uh, should I be checking my journal? So this is going to track missions and stuff. Strange activity in the Hydra system of the Ergos Rogue Cluster. to the tower. The tower is the highest point in this place, but I'm sorry, we are going to just be exploring so good. Alright, we can go that way or that way. Let's go back here. Oh, we can't go this way. Okay. So we'll go this way. Okay, this is the Solarian, so, Syrian. Human. Okay. Salarin, I don't know how to say that. Salar Salarin? 
Greetings, and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Avina. Citadel Space Station. Are you real? So are you a person or a program? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence. Programmed to provide spontaneous guidance Sal in predetermined Aaron. locations of Salary. interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Sounds interesting. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. I want to know more about Citadel security. Yeah! Citadel security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from okay. virtually yeah, every it makes sense that Turians do like military, security. You. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. Okay. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. You know, that is pretty fucking crazy that humanity has that huge, giant embassy and... Those other two, like, share that small room. Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment. It often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. The Council gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. Do you agree with their decision? I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified <laughs> judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. How come the Bolas were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the Council, the Volus were, apart from the Asari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. They established many new colonies and trading outposts, and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. Why weren't they made a Council race? Yeah. The Council races have extensive responsibilities. They must provide personnel and ships for the Citadel fleets. They often provide economic aid in times of disaster. It would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations. The embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the Citadel. Hmm. Lesser. That's pretty damn arrogant. I apologize if my personality has offended you. Please submit all formal complaints in writing to the Citadel Tourist and Visitor Board. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Do you know anything about Spectres? The term Spectre is derived from the branch of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. Each Spectre agent is handpicked by the Council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Spectres answer to no law or authority except the Council itself. What can you tell me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the Council consisted of representatives from the Asari and Salarians, the two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the Council in yeah, recognition the of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Since
Since then, the three council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community, while preserving individual autonomy for each species. It can't be as simple as that. There must be problems somewhere in the system. I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. I think that's all. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you for using Avena. Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. I really like these alien designs. They're pretty damn cool. Okay, that is the Citadel Security. This is Citadel Tower. The tower is where we want to end up going, I believe. But maybe we'll check out... Before we leave here, let's... Uh, we came from that direction. Let's, I think there's more embassies up here. Shepard, I didn't expect to see you here. Did Ambassador Udina send you? Have we met before? No, but I know you well enough. I'm Executive Palak, head of CSEC. CSEC, okay. It's my job to know when someone like you arrives on the Citadel. Was there something you needed, Commander? I get the feeling you're not too fond of humans. No, I just don't trust your kind. Not yet. You humans are eager to take all the power you can get, and you're being given a lot. The Council wants to make humanity their new favorite pet. That's their business. Whose voice is this? But I don't have to like it. What do you know about the Spectres? They're the right hand of the Council, or so they like to be called. More like the underhanded side of the council. What do you have against the Spectres? I can't abide any organization that considers itself above the law. Especially when it's left up to each individual Spectre to decide when and how to bend the rules. Tell me about CSEC. CSEC provides necessary police and security services throughout the Citadel. We're a civilian government agency, though many of our members have had military training. Of course, as the CSEC representative to the Council, I spend most of my time liaising between the two. Tell me about your investigation into Sarah. Sorry, Commander. <laughs> no. I don't make a habit of giving out details about ongoing investigations. I'll be going now. Goodbye. Oh, that's the level up sound. You can level up just by talking. Sweet! Squad. Six more, damn. Okay. Well, I think leveling these up is good. We'll do another... Assault Rifle and Combat Armor. Shield Boosts. Ooh. Um, two more. You don't have to do both of these. Can I take them back? Nope. So charm is for the good options, intimidate is for the bad options. I don't know if I can take them back. You could before you closed it! <laughs> oh, man. You can it later in the Normandy? Okay. Um... 
let's work our way. Equip heavy armor seems like the one I want to jump to. Adrenaline bursts. Yeah, we'll do this. Alright, we got four here. We'll get this decryption, which electronics unlocked. What's the next one do? Advanced Sabotage. Those seem like they're pretty cool. And then we'll, uh, first aid and throw. Okay, um, combat armor, shield boost, assault training, adrenaline bursts. And, uh, two soldier points. Alright, cool. Level three. Alright, uh, let's learn what we got from Codex. Biotics, a virtual intelligence, is an advanced form of user interface software. VIs use a variety of methods to simulate natural So this is a virtual intelligence, not an in interface. artificial an intelligence, because this has been kind of banned, right? Although a VI can provide a convincing emulation of sentience, they are not self-aware. Nor can they learn or take independent action. That's what the are. VIs are used as operating systems on commercial and home computers. Minimal VI agents are also available. Agents are compact and specialized. Some serve as personal secretaries, filtering calls and scheduling meetings based on user-defined priorities. Others are advanced search engines, propagating themselves across the extranet to collate user-requested data. Extranet. Commercial VIs in a variety of stock personalities are available at any software retailer. Okay. Boutique firms and hobbyists also build unique VIs to personal specification. Although software emulation of living personalities is illegal, Reconstructions of famous historical figures are common. Oh, that's cool. Interesting. Two hundred thousand constables. Enforcement, investigation, customs, network, special response, patrol. You can join it. It's prestigious. The C-Sec inspectors are often at odds. Well, maybe if I fail at being a specter, I can be a C-Sec. Alright. They also get the cool view like the humans do. Human embassy's right there, isn't it? Nope. Nope. Gotta go over to that embassy now. What we got here? Manual overdrive. The following message was transmitted from an untraceable account to multiple recipients across the extranet. Further monitoring of the situation is warranted. My fellow biotics, you have been selected to receive this transmission because of our shared plight. Few understand us, fewer tolerate us. We must stand together. We must build our own new world. Come join us in the Hawking Edda Cluster. Only as one body can we right the wrongs done to our kind. Interesting. Oh, there's a lot of people here. Is this like a rec room or something? What is this? Are there any... Like, I can't tell gender if there's any genders or anything with these other aliens. But am I, is there any, like, I mean, these blue chicks got titties. 
Are there any blue men? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be assuming these things. I don't have time to talk now. I'm very busy. All right, damn. I can't believe the rumors. The consort would never reveal her secrets. What do you want? Oh, Commander. Yeah. Dick, Is there something I could do for you? Relax, Private. This isn't an inspection. Right. Sorry. What can I do for you, Commander? What can you tell me about the Asari consort? I, uh... Well, she's an Asari who works here as... That is, she helps people with... things. You never went to see her, did you, Fredericks? I, uh... No, I never did. Uh, I couldn't afford it. It costs half a year's credits just to go in and talk to her. Just to go in and talk to her? Can you at least tell me where I can find her? Sure. She's across the bridge from the embassies. Thanks, kid. Have fun. Try not to get into too much trouble. I will. Have fun, that is. I don't have time to talk now. I'm very busy. Hello, Commander. Can I get you something? Oh, okay. Why not? That's what it means. I was like, why not? What have you got? Information, mostly. Would you like to know about some points of interest nearby? Yes. What's going on around here? Well, you found the embassy. Let me go a little over tonight, here. guys. Across the bridge, you'll find the bank, the Emporium, and Shaira's. If you haven't heard of her, you soon will. If you need supplies, you can try the markets one level below. For entertainment, I'd try Flux or Cora's Den. Okay. Tell me. What is Shaira's? The consort, uh, she entertains clients who can afford her services. Most of the diplomats and ambassadors have visited her at one time or another. She's a very powerful woman, but also very respectful. I'm just so curious. Tell me about Flux and Cora's Den. Well, Flux has gambling and dancing, certainly more lively than this place. Cora's Den, on the other hand, well, let's just say it's livelier and deadlier all at the same time. Gotcha. Okay. Goodbye. So long, Commander. Have a pleasant day. You too. Um, I don't know. Is there... What's in back here? I'm so afraid about missing things. Huh. Another one of these dudes. Hey, dude. Can you not speak to them at all? Is there a codex thing about them? After the Geth secure. Not yet, at least. I want to learn about those jeepers, keepers. I don't know their names. I can't believe I landed a job here. This place is fantastic. Good for you. Human delighted welcome. It is good to meet you. Human delighted welcome. Codex. Turian to Council to Associate Dreadnoughts. Five to three to one. Huh. Okay. Also doesn't seem very fair, but whatever. What do these guys do? It's weird that you can't interact with any of them.
There's nothing that way. I think now we go, uh... We go back down. Right? Not there. I just came from there, so now we go this way. Is this like a loading area? Why that doesn't open up automatically? I know it's an older game, so that might be a, a loading thing. A receptionist. Good day, Commander. The human ambassador is up the stairs, first room on the right. You know who I am? Yes, I receive reports on all newly arrived dignitaries and notable people. What is this place? This is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel Embassies. If you have more questions, please access Avina. Avina. I know Avina, but I still have to ask. Oh, Avina is the virtual hmm. guide for the Citadel. Feel free to access the terminal yourself. What's your name? What do you do here? My name is Sephiria. I'm the administrative assistant for the embassies. You seem to be distracted. The embassies are the hub of all Citadel politics. <laughs> when you represent trillions of citizens, it tends to get a little busy. Okay. I should be going now. Have a pleasant day. Codex. What codex did you give me? Presidium Ring. Okay. Do I get experience just from talking to everybody and doing the codex stuff? So the CSEC Academy is this way. Ah! Ah! Ah, nothing is real! This is all a dream! You speak? No, you sit. I do not speak, I sit. Do I want to go to the CSEC Academy? I'm technically not supposed to right now. I'm supposed to be going to the Citadel Tower, I think. That's to the embassies. I just came from here. Is there anybody I can talk to from here? I don't think so. But I can go across here and find that consort lady. Dude, don't stand so close to him. Sure is peaceful. You look peaceful. want to interact. I want codex info. I don't know where the fuck I'm going. Whoa. Ashley said, hmm. Hard to believe the Krogan were once seen as the saviors of the galaxy. Is that a Krogan? Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 3. Here in the Financial District, a number of businesses offer various goods and services to their exclusive clientele. The statue you see before you was commissioned to honor the Krogan soldiers who gave their lives to protect Citadel space during the Rachni Wars. Rachni Wars. In the aftermath of the Krogan rebellions, several embassies petitioned to have the statue removed. However, this motion was eventually quashed by the council. Mm. Tell me more about the Krogan rebellions. 
In recognition of their efforts during the Rachni Wars, the Krogan were granted several new colony worlds by the Council. Over the next 400 years, the Krogan species began to expand. Blessed with an extremely high birth rate, their numbers began to swell. Okay. Faced with a critical overpopulation crisis, the Krogan started a violent colonization of nearby worlds inhabited by other Council species. Uh. The Krogan rebellions had begun. So it's a space issue. For a full century, the Council and its member species fought to bring the Krogan under control. With the aid of the newly discovered Turian Empire, they were ultimately successful. You needed the Krogan to stop the Rachni. Then you needed the Turians to stop the Krogan. So who's going to stop the Turian? Yeah. I am sorry, but that question is beyond my programming parameters. <laughs> the Turians are members of the Citadel Council. They are not a threat to galactic peace. Except for the one dude. Why did the Council fight so hard to keep the statue? The Krogan were instrumental in saving the galaxy from the Rachni threat. The Council believed this historical fact should not be forgotten. The Council also hoped that preserving the memorial would improve diplomatic relations with the Krogan and bring about a peaceful resolution to the rebellions. Unfortunately, the Krogan refused to negotiate and only surrendered after their population and homeworlds had been ravaged by the Turians. What were the Rachni Wars? Nearly 2,200 years Shepherd ago, is the most explorers person to expand in the world. Citadel space opened up mass relays leading to systems controlled by the Rachni. A highly intelligent and aggressive insect race, the okay. Rachni unleashed a war of conquest against the rest of the galaxy that lasted for nearly three centuries. The emergence of the Krogan finally turned the tide in favor of the Citadel species. Krogan forces provided the numbers necessary to halt the Rachni advance and drive them back. The Krogan then pursued their retreating fleets. Able to survive the harsh environments of the Rachni homeworlds, the Krogan hunted their enemy to extinction. Extinction? Jesus! Was it really necessary to wipe them out? I am sorry, but a value judgment of that nature goes beyond my programming. All right. Well, the Krogan don't fuck around, then, it seems like. That's all for now. Thank you for using Avena. Have a pleasant day. Definitely look like guys that don't fuck around. I don't know which direction to go. How cool this guy is. He's got his fucking green suit on. Green kicks. That's cool. Rapid transit. I don't want to fast travel. What's this? Welcome. I am Nelina. I don't recognize you as one of our expected clients today. Would you like me to see when the consort will be able to meet with you? Yes. Can't I just go in? Mm, I'm afraid not. Yeah, you must understand there are many who seek the consort services. But if you wish to leave your name, she'll make every effort like to meet with you. Queen Amidala lipstick going on. What do you do here, Nalina? I'm one of the consort's acolytes. Many of the people here today will not see the consort, but they expect to be attended to just the same. It's our job to ensure that they leave contented. What the fuck? What do you... How do you content them? What exactly do you attend to? Well, each acolyte has her unique abilities. Some soothe with song, others with conversation. As much as possible, we seek to match the needs of our clients to the skills of our acolytes. My specialty is touch. My fingertips can find every tension point in your body and relieve it. I'd like to try out your services. <laughs> His face. <laughs> I'll add you to our client list. We should be able to see you in mm, 
three or four months. Oh man, that's funny. Three or four months. Nobody's worth that much of a wait. <laughs> well, that's not for me to judge. I have your name and you'll be contacted. Is there anything else? What is the consort? What does she do? Mm, it's difficult to explain. She's many things to many people and something different for each. Some seek her for advice, some for entertainment, others still for pleasure. Most of the time, our clients won't realize what they were seeking until after she has provided it for them. You make her sound like some kind of oracle. No, not in the usual sense. She's merely a woman. A woman with remarkable compassion and a generous spirit. I suggest you make an appointment and see for yourself. I think I'm done here. Oh, well, I hope you'll return again in the future. We always enjoy seeing new clients. Melina. Yes, Shaira? Send the commander up to see me. I wish to speak with him. Mm, okay. Yes, of course, mistress. Huh. It appears the consort has taken notice of you. She'd like to meet with you now. Well, sure. Where do I go? Actually, stay Just here. Just head upstairs. She'll be waiting for you. Pleasure to see you. Hey. You're with the Alliance? My brother's a private back on Earth. There's a human one here. For some reason I thought they were all gonna be that species. I see even the humans find the consort irresistible. Alright. I didn't miss anything up here, did I? Run away? Where'd she go? Whoa. Dude, look at her bubble. What do you do in your bubble? What the fuck are you looking at? What's Alright? That is close enough, Commander. I've heard a great many things about you since your arrival here in our citadel. What exactly do you do? That depends on your needs. I offer advice to some, comfort to others. I have a certain problem that could use your expertise. Okay. Maybe I can help. I have a friend, Septimus, Septimus. a retired Turian general. I won't discuss the details, but he wanted me to be more than I could be. We had a falling out. Now he spends his days in Cora's den, drinking and spreading lies about me. Okay. If you would speak to him as a fellow soldier, I believe he will listen to you and let the matter be. What happened between you? I respect his privacy too much to go into the details. If he wishes to tell you what happened, that is his prerogative. What exactly do you want me to tell him? Appeal to his sense of honor. Remind him of his position as a general. If you can convince him to stop spreading lies about me, I would be very grateful. Now I must ask you to take your leave. I have many clients waiting to see me. Can I have, like, some sanitizer for my face? <laughs> Maybe it's like their species handshake. Alright. Well, we gotta talk to some fucking guy that got too close to his hookah. Ah! 
What? Ah! Ah! What? Ah, human. This one is greatly pleased to see you here in my decadent emporium. Personal question. Who are you? This one's face name is Delaninder. Though many in this place simply what? refer to it as Delan. Delan. Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for purchase. All of great worth. I want to buy a picture of you because you look cool. What exactly do you sell? Only the finest and most luxurious items that credits can buy. Credits. This one is able to procure almost any item the human would desire. For a price, naturally. Why do you refer to yourself as this one and it? For the same reason that humans are so inquisitive. It is part of our culture. Specifically, Hanar only refer to themselves in the first person with family or intimates. And we rarely do so with other species. It is just our way. Who are you? This one's face name is Delaninder. Though many in this... Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for purchase. All of great worth. I don't have any money, but I'll buy something. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. You will not be disappointed. Non-human armors upgrades and standard items 70,000 credits well, let's see what I can afford ah liberator 2 Centro foundation license what is this to Cent Serta Foundation license for the Normandy Quartermaster. What does that do? Let's your ship guy buy more stuff. Okay. It's only a hundred, so yeah, I'll get that. Oh, went all the way out. Commander, it is good to see you again. Tell me your items. Oh, this one is pleased to do so. Upgrades. Human. You will not be disappointed. First aid interface two. Harden weave. Improved sighting. Uh, all 700. Commander, show me your items. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. Okay. I don't know if I should buy anything else. So I'm going to be clear out of money. to interact with here. Lady up here looking at uh, just shopping I guess. What we got going on back here? Another one of these dudes. What is it a storeroom or something? What's this? What's this? What's this? One of the Earth <laughs> clan. Ah, a very famous one, yes? You are the one called Shepherd. The tale of how you survived the great tragedy on Akuz is truly remarkable. 
I am amazed each time I hear this it. This guy's nice. You've got me at a disadvantage here. Forgive me, Earth Clan. My name is Barla Vaughn. My job makes it necessary for me to keep informed. I am a financial advisor to many important clients here on the Citadel. When someone as important as yourself arrives on the station, I take notice. Tell me more about your job. Galactic finance is incredibly complex. A mix of laws and regulations from dozens of interstellar economies. Mm -hmm. I'm an expert in how all these economies interact. For a fee, I share my expertise. I also offer premium services for those clients who need someone to conduct business without drawing unwanted attention. Uh -huh. Discreet and efficient. Hmm. That's my motto. Is that legal? Sounds pretty shady. Everything I do falls completely within the bounds of interstellar commerce law. Even so, many of my clients would prefer their transactions remain undisclosed. For example, suppose a Hanor ambassador was petitioning the council to reduce tariffs on Hanor well. goods. How would it look if he had money invested in a Hanar exporting company? Even if his true motives were to help his people, he would be accused of advancing the petition for his own personal gain. I can keep his personal finances private. Hmm. What's it like living here on the Citadel? The station is without a doubt the greatest wonder in the galaxy. It is a technological marvel, but its true splendor goes much deeper than the hull and engines. Mm -hmm. From the Presidium to the wards, the entire station is a testament to the success of the Council. All the species of Citadel space together in a single strong community. Hmm. Well, and the race of beings that came before, right? Because they created this place. What are the wards like? The cultural heart of the galaxy. They pulse with the lifeblood of millions of citizens from dozens of different species. You never know what you'll find out in the wards, Commander. It's always full of surprises. Fortunately, most of them are pleasant. What makes the Presidium so special? It is the political center of Citadel space. Eighty percent of all intelligent species in the known galaxy acknowledge the Council's authority on interstellar matters. But only the most powerful and influential species have embassies here on the Presidium. This level of the station is reserved for the elite, Shepard. People like us. Us. And I should go. Mm. Goodbye, Commander. Goodbye, Commander. Rapid transit. Dude. This place is huge, it's cool. Where do I go next? I'm guessing that's the tower over there, which is where I'm meant to be. I'm gonna look at some codex stuff. Woo, look at that guy. Krogan, huh? The Asari were the first species to discover the Citadel. When the Salarians arrived, it was the Asari who proposed the establishment of the Citadel Council to maintain peace throughout the galaxy. Since then, the Asari have served as the mediators and centrists of the Council. An all-female race, oh. the Asari reproduce through a form of parthenogenesis. parthenogenesis. They can attune their nervous system to that of another individual of any gender and of any species to reproduce. This capability has led to the unseemly and inaccurate rumors about Asari promiscuity. Asari can live for over a thousand years, passing through three stages of life. In the maiden stage, they wander restlessly, seeking new knowledge and experience. 
When the matron stage begins, they meld with interesting partners to produce their offspring. This ends when they reach the matriarch stage, where they assume the roles of leaders and counselors. Huh. So they can mate and reproduce by being with any sexually reproducing species? And those offspring are just more Asari, not like... Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, well... Roughly 1,200 years... 50,000 years ago, though now extinct, the Rachni once threatened every species in Citadel space. Over 2,000 years ago, explorers foolishly opened a mass relay to a previously unknown system and encountered something never seen before or since, a species of spacefaring insects guided by a hive mind intelligence. Unfortunately, the Rachni were yeah, not peaceful, the and the galaxy was plunged into a series of conflicts known as the Rachni Wars. Attempts to negotiate were futile, as it was impossible to make contact with the hive queens that guided the race from beneath the surface of their toxic home world. The emergence of the Krogan ended the Rachni Wars. Bred to survive the harshest environments, the Krogan were able to strike at the queens in their lairs mm -hmm. and reclaim conquered council worlds. But when Krogan fleets pressed them back to their homeworld, the Rachni refused to surrender, and the Krogan eradicated them from the galaxy. Mm -hmm. The Elcor are a citadel... The the Hanar are a citadel species known for excessive politeness. Excessive. They speak with scrupulous precision and take offense at improper language. Hanar that expect to deal with other species take special courses to help them unlearn their tendency to take offense at improper speech. All Hanar have two names. The face name is known to the world. Mm -hmm. The soul name is kept for use among close friends and relations. Okay. Hanar never refer to themselves in the first person in conversation with someone they know on a face name basis. To do so is considered egotistical. So instead they refer to themselves as this one, hmm. or the impersonal it. Their homeworld, Kajay, has 90% ocean cover and orbits an energetic white star, resulting in a permanent blanket of cloud. Due to the presence of Prothean ruins on the world, many Hanar worship them, mm. and Hanar myths often speak of an elder race that civilized them by teaching them language. Gotcha. Interesting. Credits. Credits are money. Got it. This place is huge. Embassies in CSEC. The wards. Okay, so this goes down to, like, where the people live. And then over here is going to be the tower. Right? Look at that bug thing over there. What's it doing? Yeah. Tell me about bugs. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 2. You are standing near the base of the Citadel Tower, one of the Presidium's most recognizable and important structures. Behind me is the Spectacular Relay Monument, a scale model representation of a Prothean mass relay. Mm -hmm. To your left is one of the Keepers, the keepers. enigmatic caretakers of the Citadel, working on a control panel. You may see keepers involved in various tasks throughout all levels of the Citadel. We ask that you do not interfere with them in any way. In any way. The keepers are essential to the smooth operation of the Citadel. Obstructing their daily work will result in harsh penalties, including incarceration and rehabilitation. Jesus, what the... This is strange. Keepers. I'd like to know more about the keepers. Little is known about these peaceful servants of the Citadel. Though they are essential to the operation and maintenance of the entire station. Citadel regulations protect the keepers against interference during the performance of their tasks. Failure to comply will result in harsh penalties. Keepers can be seen in all sections of the Citadel, 
but are typically found in and around the tower. Hmm. Something fishy about that. Any particular reason there are so many keepers in this area? The keepers do not communicate with other species. It is assumed, however, that the tower houses the Citadel's primary control systems. Many of the station systems, such as navigation and life support, function automatically. It is believed the keepers operate those systems from inside the tower's inaccessible core. It is believed. The keepers also make frequent appearances in the council chamber itself, though they appear to be just passing through on their way to some other destination. Everyone just accepts it. Okay. Tell me about the Citadel Tower. Housing both the Council Chambers and Citadel Control, the Tower is one of the most important buildings on the station. Access to these areas is restricted to those with the appropriate clearance. What happens in Citadel Control? Citadel Control handles all incoming and outbound transit. Every ship within 2,000 kilometers of the Citadel is under the jurisdiction of Citadel Control. At peak capacity, they are responsible for monitoring upwards of a thousand vessels. Okay. I'd like to hear more about the Council Chambers. The business of the Council, which often has far-reaching effects on the galactic mm. community, is conducted in a room at the apex of the Citadel Tower. The council chambers themselves are truly a magnificent sight to behold, though few get to experience the view in person. Typically, only the councillors, ambassadors, and high-ranking officials, along with various support staff, are allowed access. Tell me about the Relay Monument. Discovered by the Asari who first arrived at the Citadel, the Relay Monument is one of the station's most interesting and controversial features. What is the meaning behind this striking piece of art? Is it a tribute to Prothean vanity? A reminder of their conquest of the galaxy through mass relay technology? Or perhaps it is a symbol of unity? A Prothean acknowledgement that the relays would eventually lead other species here to the Citadel? No one can say for sure, making the relay monument a favorite topic of discussion among academics and scholars. Hmm. Okay. Something about that seems weird, too. That's all for now. Thank you for using Avena. Have a pleasant day. Alright. Can we do anything with the monument, or is it just... Ashley speaking! Ashley! normally do much for me, but that relay statue, I like. Ashley likes. Anyone else hear that low hum? Sounds like it's coming from that statue. Makes my teeth tingle. Yeah, so, something's, something's weird about this statue. I don't trust it. The keepers seem weird. I don't know. I don't know, guys. But... I also, however, am just learning all these things. And no, I'm not looking at Shepard's butt. I'm trying to look at the Citadel. It's big. Citadel Tower. That's better. All right, we're gonna stand really here, right here, with this cool guy, and just check things out. And uh, I think, guys, that is going to end the stream for tonight. It has been a day, but yeah, um, this has been a really, really fun first stream. I mean, I honestly, I had no idea that the game would be so lore heavy, nor that I would be so into it already. Uh, I love the codex system. I love the guy that tells me about shit. And I also semi-enjoyed the gameplay, which was the fighting sections or the shooting sections, which honestly was the least exciting part for me. <laughs> so, it's a lot of info. I will do my best to remember everything for next week. But, yeah, next week we'll be, uh, we'll be continuing on with Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Uh... Very exciting. 
Okay, so uh, next, starting next stream, we'll go up on the tower, and I assume we'll also have to go down to uh, uh, those entertainment areas and stuff, because we got some more things to look. A whole lot of more things before, I don't know, it feels like the game actually starts when we become specters. I'm assuming we'll become a specter. But, all right, uh, I hope you guys uh, really enjoyed the stream, and uh, look forward to the highlight coming out also uh, next week which will have the best moments of this stream to catch you up for next stream. Uh, come back tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday uh, at 3 p.m. We'll have our weekly podcast. We'll be talking about all the great things of our week and other news stories and other things. And one of my best things of the week will be playing Mass Effect. So make sure you come back here for that. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you back here next time. Bye-bye.